Amy Henningsen is a registered occupational therapist and is a graduate of Eastern Mich Michigan University. She is certified in neurodevelopmental treatment in pediatrics and as an assistive technology practitioner. She has over 30 years of experience working with developmental disabilities in a variety of settings. She currently provides direct and consultative services for the Up to Three Early Intervention Program and is a member of the Utah Assistive Technology Program. Today, Amy will present a variety of assistive technology devices available to seniors to help them maintain their independence. Simple low-tech products as well as high-tech products will be demonstrated in the area of activities of, a activities of daily living, such as mobility, bathing, dressing, eating, meal preparation, household chores, and other things. And now we'd like to turn the time to Amy. And I guess I'll tell everyone good afternoon. We have a beautiful fall day here and it's going to be Halloween tomorrow so we're all excited about trick-or-treating so hopefully Story has some treats for me when I'm finished here today. Our topic as she says is on assistive technology for the elderly and it was really an interesting uh, topic to research and do more work on. Um, one thing about as we go through our lives is we're all getting older and we're all heading down that same path and the good news for all of us is that we are able to benefit from all these new products, all these new technologies. But as it says on the first um, slide on the PowerPoint, every day new products and services are being created for people of all ages, but knowing what is out there and how to get it can be quite a challenge. And I think all of us feel that way, especially the elderly um, and all of us who aren't as technology uh, wise as other people. So there's an awful lot of things on the internet, but not all of us know how to use it effectively. Hopefully we'll give you some resources to help you with that. So assistive technology is any piece item or piece of equipment that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capacities in individuals with disabilities. And not that aging is a disability, but we also share a lot of the same areas of uh, limitations in terms of strength, mobility, and so on. So assistive technology really fits in with a lot of the needs that the elderly have. And we want to improve the quality of life and maintain that independence. We want to be able to have individuals stay in their home as long as they can. I always like to think that a more simply defined way of saying about assistive technology, I'll get rolling here quickly. I'll, this is not my, uh, my avenue when it comes to webinars because I am a clinician, but I will try to slow my speech down and improve this a little bit. Assistive technology is the development and the provisions of devices and services that help people circumvent the effects of a disability or once again aging. There are a number of different categories of assistive technology. Today we'll be talking about um, daily living aids, um, things for bathing, for cooking, for eating, environmental controls. There are so many new products out there that help us uh, in our homes turning on lights, opening doors, so on. Mobility and transportation aids. We have canes, we have wheelchairs, we have walkers. Seating and positioning. One of the most difficult things for a lot of people who are living at home is just being able to get out, up out of a chair. So being able to get, get yourself around your home, being able to stand up easily. Communication aids computer access, ergonomics, you know, how you're using lighting, how you're sitting in your chair, how high your table is. A lot of those things affect your performance in your home daily. Hearing and listening devices, this is a very large area. As we age, we tend to lose some of our sensory uh, abilities, our ability to hear clearly, our ability to see clearly. Um, Educational, that's not as relevant for as we age, although we all know that if we continue to learn and if we continue to stimulate our brains, that our capacities to function will continue. So determining the needs. For many seniors, assistive technology makes the difference between being able to live independently and having to get long-term nursing or home health care. 
For others, assistive technology is critical to the ability to perform simple activities of daily living, such as bathing or using the bathroom. And if you consider that message, I, I mean, there are so many people, as you age, the number one priority for them is to stay in their home. They don't want to move into a different environment. They want to stay in the home that they're familiar with, in the neighborhoods where they've been living, and in the communities that they're familiar with. So when I look at assistive technology, a lot of times we'll look at all these different products and we'll say, oh, this is pretty fun. You know, oh, I have this, this handy dandy little sponge that with an extended handle on it. And so, you know, that's pretty cool. But do I need it? Do, do I personally need it? Probably not. So first you want to identify a need. There's many things out there that we could look at and we might like, but is there a need for that individual? And then we want to assess the person's abilities. So if you have limitations of range of motion of your shoulder, then using something like an extended handle sponge is going to be very handy for washing your back or the back, back of your legs. And so there is assessing that person's ability. Are they able to move? How are they able to do those activities? Can they do it without an assistive technology device or do they need something? And then what we want to do is we want to match those features to the individual. And in, in that case, we're looking at, okay, I have limitations of my arm, therefore having something with an extended handle is going to allow me to do that. If I have a poor grasp, having something with an enlarged handle is going to help with that to allow me to grasp something. This is just a piece of plumbing tubing that we get at the hardware store, but you could put, cut a piece of this off and put it on your hairbrush, you could put it on um, a knife that you're cutting with. So if you don't have the grasp in your hand, this would match your need to be able to grasp and cut something. So that's what we are referring to when we talk about uh, feature match. So some of the impairments related to aging, and once again, I'm going to be referring a lot to how we're going to match the, the impairment with the device. So we have a lot of sensory impairments, loss of vision, vision you know, um, all of us as we age generally will pretty soon we'll all be going into Walmart or one of the local stores and buying glasses that will enhance and magnify uh, print so you can read your prescription bottles. Hearing, that's very common. We all know that as we go to visit grandpa and grandma, all of a sudden we're shouting at them or we feel like we're shouting. The loss of taste and smell, that's going to affect your, your appetite. Um, it's also a safety factor. If your house catches on fire and you can't smell the smoke, that's a concern. What are we going to do about that? How are we going to help that person get out of the house? Loss of sensation. As we age, we lose sensation. And as we lose sensation, if you lose sensation on your bottom of your feet, your balance is compromised. If you have someone who has uh, diabetes, that's a real common problem that they lose, lose sensation of their legs and knowing where their body parts are, whether they're having pressure on their extremities that can cause a pressure sore. Physical limitations, we all lose strength. You know, it's beautiful nowadays how the elderly, and, and, and I include myself as I'm getting older, but we work a lot harder at maintaining our strength. We're much more active in our communities. We're riding bicycles, we're hiking, doing a lot of those types of things. But part of losing your strength is you're losing your range of motion. You can no longer reach up to that shelf and pull that bowl down off the top of the shelf because not only have you, have you lost your range of motion, but you don't have the strength, so there's a danger there. Balance disorders, you know, one of the number one things that takes people out of their homes are falls. You know, what are we going to do if someone is falling? You know, it's one thing to fall and be able to get back up, but what about the people who fall and aren't able to get up? Obviously, that's a life-threatening situation. Fine motor impairments, we start losing the, the fine motor dexterity and the strength in our fingers. You know, 
threading those needles is very difficult. You know, it's always been difficult for me, but now it's really difficult. Not only can I not see, but I don't have the eye-hand coordination I used to. Cognitive impairments, memory, processing speed, attention, um, those are areas that uh, it impacted me when I started to care for my mother. Uh, one of the main reasons that she came to live with me was the fact that she couldn't remember when to take her medications. So she was taking the wrong medications and uh, taking too many or not taking enough. Um, her ability to process information was severely limited, uh, problem solving. Those were the issues that, that took her out of her home. And the very last thing that she ever wanted was to be in her home. So that's where assistive technology and some of the high-tech assistive technology, some of the smart homes that we'll get into later, come into play. Times are changing. Not all of us can afford that, but I believe that pretty soon that that is the way uh, construction will be built. Homes will be built, apartments will be built, so they are accessible to all people through all ages. Health impairments, anytime you have cardiac problems, respiratory problems, they in fact in, impact those other areas, the physical, the sensory, the cognitive. So I went ahead and I started with um, AT for visual impairments. And throughout the presentation, I've tried to put different, um, different areas uh, that I use some of the catalogs to look at products. And one of them that I really like is this independent living and you can contact them and they will be, uh, they're really good about sending you catalogs. They have a lot of really nice products for people who are having uh, hearing and vision loss, but it also gives you an explanation of what the product is, what the cost is, so on and so forth. Um, like I say, one of the first things that happen is we all go to Walmart and we get magnified glasses so we can start to read that fine print. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but as you age, we have about 14 pair. You know, you have a pair here and a pair there, and they're everywhere. The other thing that comes into play with glasses is that you can use different tints and how that can affect you if you have a visual impairment. Um, I was born with a lazy eye, so I have impaired vision in one of my eyes. So I have a lot of problems with depth perception and contrast. So for me, an amber or a yellow pair of lens is very comfortable for me and when I'm outside if I don't have glasses on I'll be I, I will squint but if I have a pair of those type of glasses it really helps me if I put on a pair of dark glasses like the brown or the green they don't work as well for me I don't get that contrast so anytime you have problems with contrast or with depth perception some of the yellow or the amber lenses are helpful and the same with the rose color. Those will help with depth perception as well. Whereas the darker shades will help you with, with just, you know, making things darker so it's not so bright. It will also help you um, with different areas. And I just recommend that you try the different glasses and see what works best for you. Uh, one, is, one isn't equal to another. You have to really try them and you will notice a difference with that. Another thing that with the yellow lenses, you may have seen that they will sell those for nighttime driving. So if you will have problems driving at night where the, the headlights are coming at you and you're having a lot of problems uh, con with the contrast there, the yellow lenses can help at night and they actually sell glasses that you can use at nighttime for that. Additional things with, with, uh, for visual impairments is enlarged print. And as I said, in this catalog, they have just all types of different products, anywhere from different types of lamps, different types of magnifying glasses, all different types of products. So to go along with that, you have the enlarged display clocks. They also have alarm clocks that will actually shine the light up on the ceiling at night. So if you're having a hard time, you know, knowing where you are, or orientating yourself, where well, you can actually just look up and see it on the, reflected on the ceiling. The other thing about the large display is you can get things like the temperature, um, you can get the humidity, so on and so forth. So those are really nice digital display 
in large dis digital display uh, products. And there's numerous ones in this catalog. So you can get different colors and different sizes and alarm clocks or house clocks and so on. The uh, watch down below is a talking watch. They also sell that within that catalog. So it will actually tell you what time it is. It can also signal you as to when your appointments are. So it's really handy when you need a little bit of a reminder. Oh, it's time to take my pill. You can set it for an alarm to have it go off. It can tell you what time it is. I think they're pretty handy. And they're really nice for little kids as well. They actually sell some in the catalog for children as well. In, use, in terms of using the keyboards, there's a lot of different keyboards that are out there and you can get different colors. Um, the one on, that is black with the red letters helps people with contrast. A lot of times the red on black works out very well for people. Another color that works well are the yellow keyboards with the black letters. And um, I had a phone call from um, a colleague of mine who told me that they have them at the dollar store right now, the, the yellow large keyboards. And I think a lot of times there are a lot of these products that are commercially available now. And if you're out looking around for them, you can find a lot of these at a, at a low cost. Um, if you're not a shopper, like I'm not much of a shopper, you're a lot more limited. But there are so many things if you go to to uh, the hardware stores, or if you go to Walmart, or the dollar store, or Radio Shack. A lot of those places really offer a lot of products that can be used to enhance your ability to stay home. The center portion of that screen shows you uh, the control panel, and Microsoft um, offers an accessibility option on the computer. And you'll see it up there. I see it up in the upper left-hand corner. There's a little symbol with a wheelchair there. And what it allows you to do is something like sticky keys. So if I am just kind of looking at a book and typing, I could hit the shift key, and the next key I hit would be uh, a capital F. And the next letter would go back to a lowercase. So a lot of the features that we have, see on smartphones now a lot of the word predictions where it starts predicting words for you. Enlarging, it offers a big magnification program so you can focus in on certain parts of your keyboard and it will enlarge it so you can more easily see it and read it. They're just terrific. And that's built into the, to the computer. It's right there available for you. And they're wonderful. They have a lot of tutorials. You can go on YouTube go through the tutorials. They'll send you a CD disc that offers to teach you how to use it. So those functions are available right now for you on your computer today. So examine those and see what you can find. Zoom Text is a commercially available product specifically for people with visual impairments and it, and it enlarges the text. It has a number of different features to it. Um, if you need something that enhances uh, the text to a, to a greater degree than something like just the accessibility features, you could look up on the internet and look for Zoom text. That would be one of the products that's available. Down below, I had the National Federation for the Blind. You know, there's a lot of really great books out there now, and which is great for the elderly. You know, if we're wanting to read books or if you're tra a traveler, being able to listen to books on tape or CDs, not tapes anymore, CDs, but the, the National Federation for the Blind will offer, uh, they have a huge library of, of books on tape. I'm, you know, it's just hard to break that habit, books on CD <laughs> or MP3s, whatever they are now. So anyway, but you can contact them if you have a physical or a visual uh, impairment you can contact them and have access to those, that library at no cost. And the, the service that they provide has greatly been enhanced in terms of being able to access it in a, a much greater range in terms of they're on CDs or MP3s, so you can sh skip chapters and so on and so forth. Anyway, that is available if you don't know about it and you have a need for something like that, there's the website. Um, once again, looking at visual impairments, because that's such a common, common problem. Um, 
The gentleman up in the left corner is using a mag just a, a stand with a magnifier. Um, once again, the catalog that I referred to you has a lot of those products in there. It's just, it's just really a lot of fun to go through that catalog. There are so many different products. It's, it's just fun. But if you have a need for it, you can pick out the specific needs that you have. For example, this man is sitting down. He's in his comfortable chair. He doesn't want to have to hold a magnifying glass. He's got an easel board that will alter the, the, the range that the print is on so he doesn't have to bend over and look at the print. So all those things are those features and he looks very comfortable to me and he has, has met his needs specifically for the way that he lives his life. And that's what we all need to do. We don't want to get a product and not have it work for us. One of the biggest difficulties with assistive technology is abandonment. And that's when people get a piece of merchandise that might look really cool, but it doesn't work for them. You buy it, you put it on the shelf, it's never used again. Um, you know, I think a lot of products nowadays, you can find it, it um, here in Utah, the Deseret Industry, which is kind of like Salvation Army in other places, or Goodwill, where a lot of these products are being donated. Those are great places just to browse through. Once again, if you're a shopper and a consumer, those, those are great avenues for you. The middle picture is just natural lighting. There's nothing better or more natural for us be, to be able to see than natural lighting. So consider you know, where your windows are, where, you, where you're eating your meals, or where you're doing your reading. Plan the way that you live your life trying to benefit from natural lighting. That's a no-cost give me. And it's, it's uh, you know, it also helps you just in terms of your mood to stay feeling like you're alive and it's a sunny day and it's beautiful out. The next photo is just showing a woman who is using a smaller magnifying unit with a light. She has the light there, so she look, looks like she's doing her scrapbooking, but she's got that magnifying glass. They also have ones that you can wear around your neck if you're a knitter. It just has a string and a little bracket and it sits around your neck so as you're knitting or as you're sewing, you can enhance the, what, you're, what you're doing. Great ways to be able to modify uh, some of those activities that you used to enjoy that you can no longer do. Down below is a CCTV. That's a closed circuit television. Um, those are pretty high priced, um, and yet at the same time, if you're still in a work environment and glasses aren't enough for you, and you're needing to do a lot of reading, they work wonderfully, and they are, they're on a really nice sliding, gliding board, so you can just move around your documents so it's enhanced, and you can see how much larger that print is. The middle one, a big problem for the elderly dealing with their medications. Everybody's got about 10 different medications. They're all supposed to take them at a different time. They're all, everything's for something else, and you don't want to take one with another. So this little magnifier is just a little handheld magnifier. It has a light to it. So it turns on a light and obviously magnifies the print. So you're not getting an overdose of your favorite medication. The other thing that's available are just enlarged telephones, enlarged um, TV remotes. Um, all of those things are just really handy if you have a visual impairment. The, you know, I think we, all of us read the Parade magazine and they have the jitterbug uh, uh, mobile phone, the flip phone that has the larger keys so you can hit them. Um, you know, I, can, I can't even read my text messages without my glasses. I have one of the older phones, so um, it's pretty, uh, interesting how all that works as we get older. Hearing loss. That's another big one. When, when they talk about different types of disabilities, vision, when you have a visual impairment, it separates you from things. You can't see the door, you can't see your dog, you can't see your grandchild. With a, the with a hearing loss, they say that you lose communication with other people. So in that case, what's happening is that you become more isolated. 
you know, you're kind of missing the conversation. You're kind of coming into things halfway through. You hear part of what people are saying, but not everything that people are saying. So it's, it's a huge area, and all of us, as we age, start having hearing problems at different frequencies. Um, the, the one where the in, you see the individual sleeping with the large display clock, that's a vibrating um, alarm clock. The device that goes under the, the pillow vibrates. So when the alarm goes off, rather than having a beep, although I'm sure you can have either or, it will vibrate you and wake you up. It's kind of like having a little, your very own earthquake. You know, it's like, oh, time to get up, let's get going. <laughs> Might be a good way to get the morning started, actually. Um, another one up in the upper right-hand corner um, is a flasher. So when people come and ring the doorbell, a lot of people can't hear the doorbell. You know, I don't know, I do home visits, so I'm forever going up to people's houses, and I ring the doorbell, and I'm like, okay, I wonder if the doorbell works. I wonder if, the, if they'll hear their door. Well, this is a really nice um, uh, piece of technology that flashes a light. So if the doorbell is rung, the light flashes, so you actually get a visual cue that there's someone at the door. Um, the TV ears, I, once again, Parade Magazine, you know, they, they do a lot of advertisement there. That's terrific. I mean, how many of you at home sit there and fight with what the volume's going to be? You know, my husband likes it loud, I like it soft, um, you know, my daughter likes it loud, so I guess I'm the one out of, out of luck. But what I could do is get a couple rabbit ears and give them both rabbit ears, and then I could watch it in peace. <laughs> And they actually have new, new uh, televisions that will adapt the sound, so when the music comes on, it doesn't go amplify it and go down. So a lot of those technologies are being built into the present day uh, televisions and high definition TV screens and whatnot. Um, once again, I put a website on there, clarityproducts.com. Um, that's where you can find a lot of the things devices for hearing losses. Um, this is just an example of, of a, a lamp player. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Oh, there, that works. So you could just plug a light, light into that device and it amp, it, when you hear a noise, it will flash the lights for you. You know, some of these products, they're pretty reasonable. And if you consider the fact of, you know, whether you're missing someone coming to visit you or not, especially as you're older and you're, you're more isolated, you don't want to be missing people who are coming to visit you. You know, it's very important that you keep up that, those social interactions. Um, down below you have a telephone that has the, the amplification, the mobile phone. You know, there are specific products that are available nowadays that can help you just like everyone else with your mobile phone, except this one amplifies the sound so you can hear it more easily. The wristwatch vibrates. You know, just like the other one you, where you had a talking watch, if you can't hear it, it doesn't do you any good. So to have something that vibrates on your, your wrist, and I think a lot of us use that on our telephones. Uh, we put it on vibrate so we're in, when we're in a meeting we don't disrupt things but we have a signal as to when things are happening. Um, the other one is for the doorbell, or I'm sorry, the telephone. The telephone rings and you get a large sound. And that middle one down below, um, that is actually for telephones. What it does, it allows you to amplify the sounds on, on a house phone. So you can add that and you can change the tones, uh, uh, the frequency of the, the telephone conversations, also the volume. And once again, there's another website down there, um, LSNS, Learning and Sight, Sight uh, Products. Moving on to mobility, which is another area, and I think all of us are dealing with that too, you know, especially as the weather starts to get cold and things get a little slippery, um, you know, and, and not only the elderly, women who are expecting babies, you know, your balance is off, your center of balance. And you see a lot of people now using really what I call snazzy canes. They have all kinds of decorative canes. And they're just, they're pretty and they're kind of fun, but they're also very useful when you're stepping off a curve 
or you're carrying a, a bag of groceries and, and you're trying to maneuver yourself around, just something to help you balance. I mean, as I say, you know, falls are one of the number one reasons why people end up having, having to leave their homes or have a hip replacement. So to have a little cane, and especially when they're, they're aesthetically pleasing as they are now, you know, is kind of fun. You know, I, I think the stereotypic, oh, I'm getting old, I'm using a cane, you know, let's throw that concept out the window. And there's different types, you know, when you're looking at those type of products, once again, you're looking at the features. You know, do you need a larger handle? Do you need one that's lightweight? Do you need one that folds up? All those different types of products are available. You can get canes that will collapse and fit into a sack, so you can just carry it with you, put it in your briefcase when you get, get out of your meeting and you're going to go to your car, pull it out of the bag, assemble it, and you can walk easily with it. You know, it's just, it's great. And you see a lot of people now just in normal exercising using the, the dual uh, walking sticks. You know, it's great exercise, it helps you with your balance, you know, really nice stuff that's coming out. The woman down below with the walker, she has a four-point cane. That's if you need a little bit more balance and more stability. You know, having one, one little uh, contact with the ground is pretty nice if you just kind of, you know, a little bit of a balance reaction. But if you need something that's going to help you a little bit more and you're a little bit more unsteady, then you probably want to look at something that offers a little bit more stability. So anything that has a larger base of support is going to provide you with greater stability. And you, a lot of the products now, you can see with that product, there's a little knob down below. That will allow you to adjust the height of the, the handle. Um, different types of walkers, I think we're all familiar with the old standard aluminum walker that folds in half. Very nice for those type of people that need that. They're lightweight, they fold up. But at the same time, they're not very handy on the airplane. You know, you can get onto the airplane and then, you know, you have to fold it up and give it to someone. Well, Standard's products, um, and we have some of their display information, um, is a wonderful company, and I kind of have to brag because it's one of the companies that is um, out of Logan, Utah, and it was created by a woman by the name of Jan Miller, and Jan had an elderly well, I shouldn't say Jan had an elderly grandmother. Of course she had an elderly grandmother. Her grandmother wanted to stay at home and to not leave her home. And Jan at that time was a teacher. And so Jan started to develop products for, for the senior population and specifically for her grandmother so her grandmother could remain in her home. So the walker that you see that folds up is a walker that I have right here. And it has a number of different features. For example, it's, it's number one, of course, it folds. So if you're going on the airplane, look how much handier that is. It's lightweight, so it's not going to weigh you down. They have a variety of different accessories that go with it, so you can put little products in here. They have a little, um, little strap that will hold a water bottle. So, you know, you can put your keys in here or your billfold or, let's see, what would the men be carrying? Uh, their eyeglasses. And so this is real handy. It's also got some features here where it has these little bottoms that allow it to slide. So that was one of the problems with some of the old walkers is that people would have to take a step and then lift, take a step, lift. Whereas this one has wheels on the front and the gliders on the back. And it kind of does away with the tennis balls on the bottom of the walker that everybody used to put on the walker so they would glide. And they also come, you have an option of different size wheels. So if you're going into different terrains, like where there's gravel and things like that, you can get a larger wheel rather than the smaller wheels. And once again, it easily folds up. So those are some of the, the ways that you want to look at some of these products in terms of those features. The woman down, the other woman who is walking with the larger walker, that's one of, one of the, the walkers that you're frequently seeing now, and they're very, very nice. They have a brake handle. You'll see underneath where she's holding on to it. There's actually a handle that will lock that wheelchair in position. Some of them will pull up 
others will push down. You know, depending on where your strength is, will determine whether you have a push or a pull. It also has a little seat there. So she could actually stop, turn around, and, t and sit down and have a little bit of a break there, which is really important because, as you know, if when you're needing that much assistance to be able to continue to walk and walk and walk and walk, it's difficult. You may need to take a break. If you have respiratory problems, you're going to need to take a break. Cardiac problems, you need a break. So those are, you know, considerations you want to take into account. And they have the bigger wheels. That means it's going to go over cracks easier. That means it's going to go through gravel easier. Um, it does fold up, but it is heavier. So if you have to pick it up and put it in your car all the time, you're going to need the strength to be able to do that. So we have the pros and the cons to every product. Other types of mobility devices, obviously wheelchairs. And there are all types of different wheelchairs. Um, you know, it's, wheelchairs are very costly, they're very expensive, and they all have different features that you want to look into. Um, I know when my mother came to live with us, she was unable to go very, very far, so we just had a basic fold-up wheelchair that I could get her out to the car, and then I would fold the wheelchair up, and then I would put it in the trunk. Well, that putting it in the trunk is quite a chore, and a lot of people get stuck at home because their spouse is unable to lift a wheelchair and put it in the car. That's, you know, for me as a therapist, very concerning when people are unable to get out into the environment. It really restricts their social activities, their physical health. Um, it's concerning. So that whole idea of being able to transport a wheelchair is difficult. Um, we have a program through the Utah Assistive um, Technology Program, it's called CREATE. And what they're doing is they're refurbishing wheelchairs that have been donated because other people have gotten either new chairs or uh, maybe the fam a family member has passed away and they have a chair. And they refurbish these chairs back up into manufacturer uh, specifications and sell them at low cost. Um, if you don't have insurance, if you're unable to purchase a, a new wheelchair, which you know is going to cost you thousands of dollars, that may be an option. Or for a person who's in a powered wheelchair who maybe can use that at home but needs to be able to have a manual backup chair for when that needs to be repaired or when they're going a short distance um, and they don't have a mobility, um, a van that will carry a mobility device, then another backup manual chair is handy. Scooters are very, very popular. We see them in the grocery stores. The kids love them. Um, they're great. We have all-terrain vehicles. Uh, you know, I think those are great. You know, we have a lot of elderly farmers who are using all-terrain vehicles to get outside and to do their, their farm work. I mean, it's, it's great. But if you're not a farmer and you don't have to go great distances and you're not a great white hunter, you may just want to have a smaller scooter. And the one that the, the gentleman is in, in the top is a four-wheeled scooter. So it's a bigger scooter. It will carry more weight. It's more stable because it has four wheels. Um, the chairs generally have a little lever, so you can turn the chair to get in and out of it. Um, some of them have devices where you can raise and lower the seats to, to accommodate your different environments. He has a little basket on a front and a rear view mirror. I need one of those on my bicycle so I don't get hit by traffic. But those are terrific. You know, those are those, those little bells and whistles that can make a difference for you. The one down below is the three-wheel scooter. Uh, they sell some of those that you can break down and put in your trunk. Obviously, if you're using one of those, you're not the person breaking it down, and you're not the person putting it in the trunk. However, they are very handy for just going short distances. They're not as stable. You know, if you, if you get in an uneven terrain or on a slope, you know, that's going to be more tippy. There's going to be compromises that way. And the three-wheeled uh, bicycle. I think it's awesome. I see those around town. We have people riding around Logan, going to the grocery store. Um, that's just great. It keeps people active. It keeps the circulation going. It's great recreation. Wonderful. You know, when you're looking at powered mobility, and I don't have a 
a picture of a powered wheelchair here. There's different placements of the wheels that offer you different uh, advantages and disadvantages. And if you're in a position where you need that, that extent of a wheelchair, then you want to go through a, a therapist and a durable medical dealer in order to talk about which powered wheelchair is going to be best for you. Do you have a lot of room in your home and you want to get through the gravel? Maybe you want that rear wheel drive that gives you a little bit more oomph. Are you in a smaller environment or in an office situation where you need to be able to turn quickly? You may want to look at a mid-wheel drive. So you want to be able to talk to someone who has experience and know-how and can recommend the right product for you. Okay, getting up. This is a big one. How are you going to get up? Um, the one on the upper left shows a device that has a pedestal and it pushes under the person's feet and it has a brace for their knee and so they can grab that and the person can pull them up. So that's a pretty maximum assist in or order to do that. The middle one is one of my favorites. It is so funny because these, these chair seats are on springs and they all function differently. Um, some of the initial ones were on spring and when I did it, being a smaller person, when I would go to stand up, it would kind of catapult me out of the chair because it, the spring would push me up to my feet as I started to, to raise up. But some of them use lever actions. And we have some of those different types of products here. Um, once again, standers uh, here in Logan. This is for like a lazy boy. You can add this to the handle of your lazy boy. So you have a, a grip that you can move the lever so you can raise or lower yourself in your lazy boy chair. Another device that is kind of handy for getting up is when you're in a car, you really can't see that, maybe you better hold this one. If you're in a car or if you're um, seated and you want to be turned into the table, you know, it's, it's a lot of times, like for example with my mother, I would help her into the chair and then I would take the chair and I'd pull it back and I'd push her up to the table. What this allows you to do is have the chair pulled out or in an automobile and you sit down on it and then you can turn yourself easily around. It's just a lazy boy. It just glides and moves very, very easily. So it's really nice for getting in and out of, out of cars and also sitting down and moving up to a table. Let's see. If I run into any other things as we go along, I'll pull them up. Um, the little uh, the grab bar that the woman is using with her hands to pull herself up from the couch, that is actually a device that it has a screw mechanism. So you put, put it where you want it, and then you screw it, and you tighten it between your ceiling and your floor. So it's very stable. You know, you have someone that has enough strength to make sure that you're in the right place. You want to have it where there's a beam so you're not just putting it on the drywall, so on and so forth. But then it's, I think it's quite aesthetically pleasing. It, the bars turn out of the way so you can swing those around so they're not facing you. But they let you use kind of a progressive hand reaching to get up as you try to get up. Give you something to, to help pull yourself up and also to keep you stable. The one down below the little where the person is sitting and you see this it looks like a white banana. That's one of my favorite transfer boards. It's also, it's got a round seat on it, and the seat glides on that little, you see where the, the little track is in the middle. So it just easily glides. So you put the person on there, and you're just able to easily move them from one surface to another without even having to stand up. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen the, the wooden boards. Um, I didn't put a picture of that in here, but it's just a board, and it's a sliding board. So it fits between the two uh, surfaces once again, but you have to use a lot more, lot more strength to move the person, and there's also more resistance versus this one. Um, 
This is a little homemade, shall I say, contraption um, device. This is just an obviously a piece of four by four board. And I think one of the things that I probably have learned the most doing assistive technology is using resources in your community. There are so many people out there who have skills and abilities to help others and they are, are very happy to help others if they know what they can do. This is just a four by four and it's to raise um, a table or a chair. They have the different holes in it and they're different heights. So depending on how high you want the table to be or the chair to be. And what happens because of the hole is it's more stable. So you're not going to have to worry about the table sliding off a block if you just had it on a smooth surface like that. Very simple to make. It take, just takes um, a drill bit that can drill these holes and someone who has the know-how. And you know, if you're uh, more aesthetically talented than us, then you could have it painted in a gorgeous color and you know, match your decor. But that's a real inexpensive way of dealing with, with that. Another product that um, is also from Standers, and this is a, is a big problem too, is getting up out of bed. You know, you, you're laying down and that effort of getting up, you're just stuck there. Well, what this does is it allows you to hook it to the end of your bed and it has a progressive handle grips on it that allow you to climb your way up to a sitting position. So it has these nice handles. Um, it has little attachments so you can attach it to your bed frame. So it's very stable and, and very handy. I mean, that's a lot better than having to wait around for someone to come in and get you out of bed. I mean, what if they're mad at you? They might leave you there all day. So these can be pretty handy. You would never do that to me, would you, Story? <laughs> Another idea that's pretty handy are these little um, adhesive stripped uh, textures. So you can get these, and obviously we've had this a while because the adhesion no longer works. But if you went to the hardware store, you could get these, and you can put these on your stairs, in your house, outside of your house, any place where, you're, where you need a little bit of a grit and a little bit of, of friction to prevent you from falling. Um, when it also comes to slipping on the floor, I, you know what, I'm going to come back to that because I have some other pictures of that later. So we'll skip that for right now. So anyway, that's getting up. Up out of your chair, up out of bed. Um, obviously the one that has the, the stairs and the handrail is much more extreme. Um, you know, there's all types of different ways of doing that depending if someone has problems lowering themselves then you want to have their surface a little higher. If you have someone you know, who's very fearful and, and needs uh, to be secure, then you want an even platform so they can just back up and sit down into it. So it all varies according to the individual and that can all be adjusted for them individually. There's no reason that one size fits all and that's one of the important things about assistive technology and why it's so expensive because one size does not fit all. So with some of the activities of daily living, um, you know, if you've had a stroke and you have involvement on one side, if you have muscle weakness, it's harder to work in the kitchen. There's all types of different products that are out there. This is a cutting board. It has a little edge on this side that allows you, if you're doing something like making a sandwich, you can put your bread back here add your mayonnaise or mustard and have it stay put for you rather than sliding all over. Uh, if you have that roast that you're cooking and you have one hand, you just place it on these nails. Let's see if we can get this. It's pretty wicked looking, isn't it? <laughs> so you just go ahead, put it down on that, and then you have a stable position to, to cut your meat, your baked potato, um, a lot of different products. A lot of these products have non-skid uh, features on the bottom, so as you're using them, they're not sliding around. That's also very important. You stabilize your roast and then your whole breadboard goes away. That's not good. Oh, 
Let's see what else we have here. This is the little oven stick. These are very handy. You know, if you have problems bending over and reaching into your oven, it's the one down below where they're pushing, using this device to, op to push the rack in and out of the oven. So you can use this little portion right here, hooks the rack and you can pull it out. You don't have to have the range of motion or the balance. This little angle here allows you to push the rack back in without burning yourself. I should get one of those because I've been known to do that. We have little devices that have little suction cups. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. So you suction cup that down around your burner and you put the handle of your pot here so as you're stirring it will stabilize your pot for you. Different types of bowls with different types of handles. And I don't know how many of you have been into some of the kitchen stores recently, but it is a fun time to go in there. They have just everything for everything. Um, but this is really nice. If you have involvement with one hand, you can stick your hand. You don't have to have a grip. You just are able to stick your hand through here and go ahead and stir. Uh, we didn't put the little sticky feet on there, but there's, it, it comes with the little silicone bases that you can put on the bottom. These silicone bases, you can buy, buy those at Lowe's or Home Depot, any of those type of places. Um, um, I forget some of the, the nice hardware stores that we have in town. But there, you can get these a lot of different places. And I think if you go into some of those stores, it's amazing as you do. You're going, wow, I could use this for that. Um, the little device that pours milk, I think a lot of us need that. I mean, how difficult is it to pour milk? What you do here is you're going to fit your carton here. It's going to fit in there. And then as you get your glass or our bowl, and I want, need to pour a little bit of milk into the bowl, I can just tip this up and pour what I need and bring it back down. I mean, let's see, a gallon of milk, that's seven point some pounds uh, is what a gallon of liquid weighs. So if you're uh, losing your muscle strength or your coordination, that's a lot of work. Let's see. So there's the one that pours the bowls. Lever action. You know, if, you're, if you've lost strength, you always want to be thinking about the lever action or the weight. You know, the old saying, um, if the little hammer doesn't work, get a bigger hammer. Well, what the, the jar opener allows you to do there is it allows you to use that lever action so you don't have to have as much strength to do that. This small product is a relatively simple one. This is just for opening a pot bottle. I mean, I don't know how many of you try to open some of those liter or uh, 20 ounce bottles, but it takes a pretty good grip. And even for myself, my grip is, I've lost a lot of my grip. So this allows you to put it over it and once again, use that lever action to do that. This is a little device that I really like. This is a box opener. So if you're making your, uh, let's see, a hamburger helper for dinner tonight and you can't open the box because they're all glued totally shut and you can't open them, what you do is you slide the, this under the lid and then you lift up and it will open that box for you. That's pretty handy, I think. I'm always, uh, you know, you end up getting out a knife or you end up using a pair of scissors and um, it's kind of scary watching people do that. I, I was at work the other day and I was watching my, my boss open a, a box with a pair of scissors. Well, this is a little device that we got at the dollar store and a friend of mine bought about six of them. Um, what, the, what they do is they just slide in here and you can just slide it along. So it will open things up and it also has this little button thing just to get it started. So that's pretty handy, you know, for a dollar, like I say, a lot of times in the dollar store you can get those types of products at real low cost. Last but not least, I must be an assistive technology professional because I just love these <laughs> devices. This is a great one. This one allows you, it, whatever you put it over, 
it accommodates the shape. So if you can't turn off your faucet, you put it over the top and it gives you that lever action. If you can't turn your stove off and on because the knob is too little, you just slide it over that. It will develop its own little pattern and it gives you a stable grip. So this is a, I just think this is a nice little product. And you have a little string there, you hang it up so you don't lose it, which is always a problem. Moving on, we have different types of utensils. Once again, oh my goodness, how time flies when we're having fun, huh? Um, these are utensils, different types of utensils. Um, the one in the upper left that wraps around the wrist, you know, if you have a poor grasp, you know, no matter how big the handle is, if you're just weak, you know, I'll tell you what, I will feed myself any day with that versus having someone else feed me. You know, that to me is a good solution if I am unable to feed myself because I personally don't want people putting food in my mouth that I'm not prepared to eat. The middle one is what we call a rocker knife. And as you can see there, it's kind of got that little uh, curve to it. And what that allows you to do is put it down on the plate and rock it back and forth. So it, you can cut through meat, all kinds of different things. We did a presentation earlier this year and this, this cute little gal came up to me and she said, do you know what I use? I use a pizza uh, knife. And I thought, that's brilliant. Thank you for sharing that with me. You know, a pizza knife will cut through a pizza, cuts through meat. So I thought, that was a great idea and thank you for sharing that with me. Another thing that can be difficult is bringing the utensil to your mouth. Oftentimes people will have this movement where they're able to bring their shoulder up, but sometimes being able to bring the food to their mouth is harder. So what that does is it allows them to bring it more easily to their mouth. This is our rocker knife. Rocks back and forth. Um, this is one of the enlarged handled soup spoons. A lot of these, you can bend them. So if you're right-handed, you can bend it one way. If you're left-handed, if you have the strength, you can bend it the other way. So it just makes it easier to eat. And like I say, you know, given the choice of having somebody feed you or you feeding yourself, I think most of us certainly would prefer to feed ourselves. Different types of plates. Um, you know, you can get these type of scoop plates that are shown there um, with very nice, um, very nice uh, china now. I don't want to say china, but uh, different types of nice plates that you can serve at a meal and it doesn't look like some type of special plates. They have them in these shapes. I was doing a home visit with a young boy today and he had a little bowl that had a lip on it and I was kind of chuckling to the mom. I said, you know, those used to just be be in assistive technology, but now they're commercially sold. And they're commercially sold because they work. They work for the little kids and they work for the big kids. You want to look at um, the one on the lower right is a little device. It's called the Easy Fill. What it does is you put this, hook these little devices, these little uh, prongs, I should say, onto the side of your cup and when you pour it in, it makes a little connection and makes a beep. So when, it's, when people are having difficulty knowing when they're getting to the top of their coffee cup or their uh, drinking cup, it will warn them to stop. All types of different cups, I think all of us know. Um, you know, if you're having difficulty with, with tremors, that's when you're shaking and you're, you're spilling things, you can get cups with lids. Heavier utensils or um, cups are easier to handle if you have tremors. One thing about the kitchen is make it easy for yourself. A lot of the, some of the new design, they're calling it visibility, is being able to put like the dishes rather than having it up in the cupboard and having to reach up and bring it down, putting things in drawers, you know, doing home modifications that are different, having pots and pans in drawers so you don't have to get down and bend over to get a pot and pan. These are the different types of stools. 
those are critical. You know, when people are trying to reach up, you're gonna, there's a real, real big concern of looking up and losing your balance because of your balance system. So if you have a stepping stool, especially if you have one with a handle, it's going to give you that, that security to be able to step up and get things off shelves. When I went to the, to the nice uh, kitchen store in Logan now, they have these really nice gel mats. So if you have problems with circulation in your feet or pain in your feet, uh, a lot of people have inflammation of the fascia at the bottom of their feet and it's very painful. You can get these types of rugs that will, are gel based and easier to use. Um, one of the, the concerns with uh, rugs is the fact that rugs move. So you can go to places like, oh, that's not showing up too well, to Lowe's or um, Home Depot or some of the hardware stores, and you can get the, this material that is, that is rubber and it has textures, so you can put them under your rug. They also have uh, double-sided tape, so you can lay your, your rug on a tape. These also work really nice on stairs. You can uh, get some of the adhesive. Uh, spray adhesive and add some of this to the to the edge of your stair so you have a little bit of friction so you don't have to worry about sliding. Um, there's some uh, therapeutic material and a lot of products can be found in a catalog. If you're a provider, I call this the mother catalog. It's the Patterson Medical Catalog and this is how thick it is. It has everything in it. Um, and and I think it gives you lots and lots of different ideas on uh, different types of assistive technology. Like here are different types of packs for the back of your wheelchair or your walker. Doesn't mean you need to buy it from them, but it gives you those ideas and you may be able to find it somewhere at a lesser cost or you may know someone that could sell one of those for you. But it's a great resource to be able to go in and, and look at all the different types of products that could help someone. For the elderly population, they have a, a nicer, nice catalog. I should have it here. There it is. It's called Enrichment. And these are products to help you um, as you age. So here's the rocker knife. You can see she's got the rocker knife. And here's her step stool and her different utensils and a, a cup with a, with a spout on it so she doesn't have to worry about that. One of the things I didn't point out, and I should have brought one, was a, a reacher. Uh, that's this little device back here. And what it allows you to do is to reach things that are on the floor. Let's see if I can find one here quick. Maybe I'll ask Story to do that, because up oh, here's, a, here's a set right here. What this does is it extends your, your reach. And th this one happens to have suction cups on the end and it's got a little trigger handle. So if you want to get that item up off the sh on the shelf up there, you can reach up with that, grasp your hand, and it will pull it, will squeeze on it, and you can pull it down off the shelf. So, and there's all types of different types. Once again, here's one that folds. Depending on what you need, you can get it. Dressing aids, the button hook. Let's see if I can find our button hook. I'm not even going to try to find it at the moment. We're running out of time. You can see it there. The man has got the handle. You know, buttons, if you are losing your dexterity, are a pain. So having a button hook that you slide through the buttonhole, grasp that button, and pull it out. Another thing that I have recently uh, been informed about is you can actually buy shirts that have Velcro. So the button is sewn on the outside, but it actually Velcro's shut. Um, they're terrific, you know. If you, like I say, that's a that's a really hard motor movement if you're losing your fine motor dexterity. The woman in the middle, she's got a dressing um, hook, and what it does is it has a shoehorn that allows her to slide her shoe on without bending over. It's got a little hook on it so she can hang things up or put her coat on pull her sock off, help lift her pants up so she can put her foot into it. Um, just handy types of things. Socks are always difficult to be able to bend over and get a sock on 
or to be able to bring your leg up to get a sock on. Th what the blue one does, it, al it allows you to put the end of your sock over the bottom of that and then slide your foot into it. This is another one that is frequently used. Um, you fold it, you put your sock on it, you put it down on the floor, you slide your foot into it, and then you use the straps to pull the sock up. Um, you know, these work if you get, a, get the hang of using them. Personally, this was pretty challenging for me, but if I needed it, I'd have to perfect the, my ability to use it. Um, okay. The elastic shoestrings, they're terrific. They're just opening up, they're stretching. When you release it, it closes. Uh, the little suspender strap for pulling up your pants, that is really a difficult task. If you have difficulty reaching over, using two hands together, that is a solution for you. Uh, to be able to hook those onto your pants and use that progressive pulling up to help get them to a point where you can get them with your hands and pull them up. Toileting devices, uh, sitting down on a toilet can be tough. You know, you have to lower yourself down. Once again, that getting up can be a problem. So to be able to have a device that has the handles on it gives you something that you can push yourself up with. They latch onto the seat. Um, we often refer to those as the throne. You know, so you can, uh, it kind of raises you up. You don't have to, to bend your knees and go down as far either. Then they have ones that um, will raise the seat without the handles, if you can use that. The little bar that is to the right of that, those are suction cup handles. So what that allows you to do is to hook that into, um, hook it onto your wall where you need it, whether it's getting up off the toilet or into the shower, um, or maybe when you're in the shower and you want to adjust the water and you just need something to help you get stable. And it allows you to do it without drilling holes. Um, and then they have the bathroom with the typical type of bars. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of those devices are nice because, like, say, for the one by the toilet there, a lot of those now will, will flip out of the way or they'll flip up so they're not so obvious. Um, if worse comes to worse and you can't make it to the restroom, then you can get commodes that have a chair that you can sit on. Or you can use one of the ur uh, urinals, um, which, you know, if you have to get up in, out of bed in the middle of the night, that's a pretty dangerous little, uh, little activity, getting up in the middle of the night. Um, one of the things that I purchased was just a silly little light, and I think all of you have seen those in the grocery store, in the hardware store. I keep this. I, have a, um, I live in an old house, and I live up, I, my bedroom is upstairs. And if I turn on the lights, uh, it just makes too much light. So I have one of these by the stairs, and it has a, a nice little bright beam. Say, for example, your power went out. It'd be nice to have this by your bed so you could, could find your way to the door. But I use this. Whoops, let's see if I can find it here. I will use just the color. It makes different colors. And that's enough light to help me get down the stairs without slipping on the stairs or without disturbing anyone else. These are very inexpensive. They have a little hook here. I, um, I don't have the strap for it, but you could just put it right by your bedside and have it <coughs> convenient for whenever you needed to use it. It's also nice in the car. It has a little flasher. Let's see, there it goes. So if you get in trouble when you're driving the car, you have something in the dark that can warn people that you're there. The, the items um, on the other side, uh, one of them um, is a cradet that allows you to clean yourself while you're sitting on the toilet. When I saw that picture, I thought to myself, there is no way I'm hooking that into that. When I'm hooking it into the warm water by the sink, because that would be kind of startling. However, I would much rather use cold water than nothing at all, and I'd much rather use cold water than have somebody else assist me. So it is an option. Another one is the one on the far right, and that is um, it's to wipe yourself with. It allows you to open up the little prongs, put toilet paper in there, and if you don't have the reach, it just allows you to cleanse yourself and to clean yourself. I mean, some of these products, you know, it's pretty personal, and yet at the same time, that's exactly why it's assistive technology, because 
You don't want someone else doing that for you, regardless of what you have to do to do it yourself. Bath chairs, there's all types of different bath chairs. I like the one that fits in the tub and extends out of the tub so the person can sit down and then you can slide them, slide them into the tub, lift their feet. The one in the middle, wouldn't we all love to have that, you know? Wouldn't we love to have a nice little roll-in shower? Well, a lot of places are being built with those now. Different types of organizing devices so you can have things within easy reach. Um, little foot washers, the ones, the blue uh, brush that you see down below allows you to stick your feet in there and wash the bottom of your feet. And of course, the, the detachable shower, those are so handy. They're handy for all of us. They're handy even for just cleaning the bathroom. But if you need to be able to reach and, and shower and get different areas without having to move around under the, the uh, shower head, that makes it a lot easier. And of course, now we have bathtubs, believe it or not, that have doors. So the one down below actually has a door that opens up. It's a deep bathtub. You know, we all like baths. You know, as you get older, that's something that a lot of people don't have the luxury of using anymore because they can't safely get in and out of the tub. So to be able to get into a tub and soak is a, is a really nice feature. Uh, this was a motel room. I love this. Here, this is a motel room and it's a, it's a universal room. It's got the bars, it's got a cut under the sink so you, if you were in a wheelchair you could pull under the sink. Um, the shower has the, the detachable shower head. It has a sh shower seat in it. I mean, I think that's just lovely. They've lowered the towel rack so you don't have to reach up so high. I mean, that's the way I think the future is going. I think we're going to see design that is meant for all people. I mean, we're all getting older. Uh, the baby boomers, such as myself, are right on the edge of you know, needing all these things. High tech. There are so many high tech products out there. I can't even begin to keep track of them. And thank goodness I have a teenage daughter at home, even at my age, who knows how to run all this stuff because I don't even know how to use her smartphone. But they, you have these smartphones now that have all these different applications. You can get on the internet. You can have a personal assistant, assistance calling in. Um, you have GPS. If you get lost, people can find you. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You can check out what the weather's going to be, you know, communicate with people. They're just awesome. Um, Steve uh, Jobs, I mean, the iPad, I mean, revolutionary. I mean, we are using those in early intervention for learning products and for communication products. Um, there are communication apps that you, if you get an iPad, you can have a communication app right on your, your iPad so you can communicate with somebody. You know, if you don't feel well, in fact, I had a mother tell me the other day that they had tried one of the devices and she said, um, Kyler came up to me and he pushed sick and then he pushed throat. She said it was the first time he's ever been able to tell me that he didn't feel good and where he didn't feel good. I mean, that is may sound like a small thing to a lot of people, but it's huge. If you have a child or an infant and you know they're sick but you don't know what's wrong, it's so difficult. So to be able to have someone be able to communicate with you is essential. The smart home. I mean, people who are into assistive technology, they love the smart homes. I love the smart homes. However, the majority of people can't afford them, and this is where, you know, as change comes around, we're going to see these things embedded into homes. But you have these smart homes that will let you open and lock the doors from one room or another. They have cameras to let you know if somebody's coming to your house. They have, um, uh, I'm trying to look at all these different apps. You know, your entertainment, you can open and close the curtains. You can, your multiple, multiple communication modes, whether it's the, the telephone or the um, Skype, where you can talk to someone somewhere else right on the TV screen. All these different things, turning your, your sprinklers on and off. All these things can be programmed right into one of those smartphones. 
so if you have an elderly person who's living home you could go on your smartphone and zoom in and say well where's where's mom you know is she in the kitchen she's not answering her phone is she in the bedroom and you can find the person oh my gosh she's fallen let's get over there so you know the wave of the future is going to be these smart homes without a doubt and you know just all the different products and opportunities that they offer people but they come at a price and that's where a lot of products um, you know they're not a available to the majority of elderly people however they are available um, I'm gonna put this up um, this is I don't know if you guys can focus into this this is um, whoops that's not even the one I'm looking for but this is a good website this is assistive technology for the elderly it's a handout and it's from www.eldercare.gov and what it does is it talks about assistive technology how can, how can I pay for assistive technology how do I know if it's right for me um, how can I learn more about assistive technology and one of the things that I would like to say is, you know, you're not going to know it all. And that's where each state has a program like this, where hopefully you can call in and say, you know what, I need a thus and so. Can you refer me to someone to give me information about that? And I'm not going to pull your leg. There's no way I know everything about everything. But you know what, I'll find out for you. I can research it. And I have people that I can contact that will help me find out. So I think that's, that's the critical element there, is to be able to access people who can help you. Um, these ten, top 10 technology devices for seniors, um, and I think I put the website down here. If not, uh, Story can put that on, online with this later. But basically, a lot of these devices are wireless systems that give caregivers a way to view and communicate with the senior. So, you know, they're just awesome. Some of them have sensors, some of them have mobile uh, little TV screens, videos, um, different types of things. So there's a number of those that um, are listed there. Um, another one that they have is TabSafe, and what that is is an advanced automated medication dispenser device. I mean, we've all seen the ones that have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, you know, we can divide it up, and they have all different sizes. They have big ones, little ones. They have ones that will cover, um, go through, you know, two, you know, morning and night on one for an entire week. Well, that didn't work for my mother because my mother was dumping them out and mixing them all up and putting them back in, and it was a mess. Well, what SafeTab does, it, it allows the caregiver to put the medication into these canisters that will automatically dispense the correct medication it gives you them an, an alert it tell it dispenses it and it provides information on whether they, the person has been compliant that is huge and it's www.tabsafe.com i thought that one was um, really essential um, Another one that I liked was this, um, the touchscreen computer that allows video chatting and other computer functions. It's just a touchscreen that will allow you to do that. The TV ears that will allow for the wireless headsets. Um, be Close, which has sensors that you place around the home and can be worn by an individual, so if they're going out into the community, you can have that um, stay with them. And a Fitbit, and I think a lot of people are getting really familiar with these. These are little devices that monitor uh, your fitness. They monitor how far you're walking. They monitor your heart rate. They monitor um, the number of calories you've expended. Just they track your physical activities, and they also s track your sleep. So those are a really nice high-tech device. These are all high-tech. They're going to cost you money, but... If you have it, they're pretty, pretty nice. And if it means the difference between mom coming and live with you or staying at home, you may choose just to buy one of these for her. <laughs> Great Mother's Day present. Retailers, 
there's a lot of medical suppliers, local hardware stores, big box stores, electronic stores. Um, you know, some of these devices you can get at Radio Shack. This is a touch pad dimmer, or at the hardware store you can just touch the light and it will turn on. This is a little, um, this is a little speaker that will, that uses Wi-Fi. Is that what, how do you say that? Yes, the story says Wi-Fi. See, I'm not very techni technologically smart here. But, so you can play music off your iPhone with this, but you can also answer the phone with this. So it allows you to have wireless communication and it enhances the sound. So that's from Radio Shack. I mean, you just need to keep your eyes open and maybe what we should do is give Story another job and she could start a blog where all the seniors download all of these clever ideas that they've developed. I mean, I'm surprised someone hasn't done that, but maybe they have and I just haven't, I'm not aware of it. But I think it'd be great to hear from consumers themselves and say, you know what, that pizza cutter works just dandy and it's readily accessible. Uh, the, the Utah Assistive Technology Foundation, that's something that we have here in Utah that provides low interest loans for individuals with disabilities. It also pr will help provide loans for helping people start um, a job, uh, a business, to help them begin a business. Uh, we've provided uh, loans to help people get wheelchair vans. Um, they have things for um, even iPads now, uh, depending if you qualify. We have our online trainings, which Story's in charge of and does a lovely job, and they're all archived um, on our website, and I think she um, actually has them on YouTube. Um, Create is our refurbishing of wheelchairs, um, getting those wheelchairs back up to specs, um, and getting them out to people. That's what it's all about. Um, we don't want these sitting in the warehouse. We want people who need them to have them. And here are some of the, the phone numbers in, in order to access some of those. AgriAbility is specifically a program that helps farmers uh, continue to uh, farm after they've sustained an injury. So uh, they've done some real unique things in terms of helping farmers get up into their tractors and different types of seats so it uh, reduces the, the vibration and so on and so forth. So I hope that that gives you all um, kind of a taste. I just feel like there is so much out there we can't even begin to tell you all the information that's out there. Like I say, uh, the need drives the innovation. Uh, we, have, we have engineer students. If you have a, a project, like we, one of the engineering projects was to develop a, a, a mechanical way of loading a w manual wheelchair into a trunk. If you have something that you think, oh, this, I really need this, Give us a call. Maybe we can get an engineering group to, to help design and build one of those. I mean, I'm not telling you that you're going to end up with one because it's a long, long process. But it has to start by people telling us what the need is. We have a project that we're looking for um, an individual who um, is on oxygen and is in a manual wheelchair that needs some type of way of retracting um, the oxygen hose so when they're propelling their chair, the, the hose isn't getting caught up in the wheel. Uh, we have a project that we're working on right now with, for that, and we are looking for consumers that can help us, you know, tweak the, the usefulness of something like that. So if you know anyone like that, or if you are a person who has a need like that, please give us a call. We're all ears. Thank you very much. Great, thanks Amy. We sure appreciate her time and expertise today. Uh, just a couple of notes. I wanted to mention a great place to check to borrowing a lot of this uh, assistive technology to see if it will actually meet your needs are the independent living centers. And uh, the various independent living centers of Utah all have websites and contact information online. They have a loan bank of various assistive technology uh, that you can borrow for a small period to see if it will work for you. And then again, I just ask you to remember to take the evaluation, uh, which is again on the bottom of the Aggie Cast page titled uh, UATP Survey. And we appreciate any ideas for future trainings to be left here.
And uh, another note, uh, this training will be archived after it's closed captioned, and that will be a few weeks. DVDs will be available also, and I'll put it online. You can also view all of our previous archive trainings on YouTube, uh, which are linked through our blog at utahatprogram.blogspot.com. And uh, as soon as that is archived and available, I will send an email out with that link. And I will also include Amy's PowerPoint along with the resource list with that. So look for that in a few weeks. And then just to announce our upcoming training on the 13th, that will be uh, going over the new uh, health insurance mandate. And uh, we're going to be having a navigator from Bear Lake and Cache Valley Community Health Centers presenting that. Uh, they'll be going over the, the marketplace insurance plan classifications, frequently asked questions, and things of that nature. Uh, watch for a formal announcement online about that. And we'd like to appreciate your attendance. Those of you who requested certificates, remember to send me an email with your mailing address, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>